Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tom Cat Stitchery. Happy New Year's Eve everyone. <laughs> um, okay today I have every all things knitting and fiber arts for you. Um, so if you're only here for the sewing. Today's probably not the video for you, but if you'd like to see what I've been up to with my knitting needles, some spinning, <laughs> then stay tuned. Um, we're going to be talking all things knitting. I've got a yarn haul here, some um, roving. I've got a finished product. I'm going to show you what I've been working on, my plans, all that jazz when it comes to knitting. So happy New Year's Eve to you all. I hope you guys have a very fun and safe and lovely night tonight um, and a good day tomorrow. And here is to a better 2022, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I thought 2020, yeah, it doesn't matter. Here's to a better 2022. May it bring blessings and all things wonderful upon you and yours um, in the coming year. All right, let's get started. I'm first going to talk about what's on the um, mannequin here. All right, um, I also, before we get into things, want to apologize for any background noise you might hear. It's Christmas break here in my household and I've got chaos. I, there's not, I'm not by myself in the house at all right now. So <laughs> I apologize for any background noise. All right, so this is, and it's hard to see because Lena is the same color as the sweater. I'm also hoping, um, yeah, there's some color variation a little bit. Anyway, this is the Petite Knit Friday v-neck slip over so it's a vest basically that I knit up in um okay gosh what is the one it's a Rowan kids silk haze um so you knit this up with a fingering weight wool um one strand of a fingering weight and one strand of a um mohair and kids silk blend I can't remember what the other one is that I used. I Everything's linked down below in the description box that I can link. A lot of the stuff that I got at this Fiber Fest, though, is local people that don't necessarily have websites, but um, I will link what I can. All right, so this is um, the slipover, and it took me forever to knit this thing. I've been knitting this since the spring, mostly because I lose interest in knitting over the warmer months. Um, there's just more to do outside, that kind of thing. I love getting cozy in the winter, though, so it, my knitting always amps up in the fall and winter months. I still knit a little bit in spring and summer, just not much. This thing's taken me forever. I think it's because it's a white, which I wanted, and I'm so glad I <laughs> finished one, but I was, it just took forever. And it's a broken rib, which means, so it's knit circular once you get to the under arm and so one round is knit and then the next round is uh, knit pearl knit pearl um, and then the next one knit so it, it's called a broken rib pattern and that just takes me longer to do but um, I did the size medium technically my measurements put me into the size large but um, I knit loose so that's why you should always make a swatch because um, that helps me determine and a lot of times I knit about 10% bigger so a lot of times I can just size down and things work out just perfectly so definitely do your swatches. It's it's worth it because it's a lot harder to swallow the time it takes to do a knit project. Um, okay, and then you pick up and do this beautiful little um, rib. I love the way the v-neck turned out. I'm, you know what? I'm going to take this. It's just hard for you to see. I love the way that the v-neck turned out. Let me just take this off, Lena, because I do want to show you. Look at that beautiful v-neck. I just really love and how everything pulled in really nicely on the armholes. Um, oh, and it feels the merino wool um, kid silk haze combo makes the lightest weight um, fabric, but it's very insulating. So it's like lightweight, soft, fluffy, and very insulating. I just love it, which you're gonna see that I love it here in just a second when you look at all the you know, my yarn I have for future projects. So the big thing with this, if you're watching Vlogmas, you'll notice that I got it off and so I used the same skein of mo of the, um, not mohair, of the um, merino uh, fingering weight wool. It was just one skein to do this whole thing, but I needed three skeins of, I think it was three, of the um, mohair kid sil or silk blend, the kid silk haze, and um, even though they were the same dot, uh, lot numbers, I could see a difference. And I don't know if it's just like certain lights. I want you guys to tell me what you think though. 
Um, so I had been lamenting on it on Vlogmas, but um, I don't know. I don't know that I can tell now that it's been blocked all nicely. So I'll have it on. Um, I'll post, obviously, video of me actually wearing it and let me know what you think. Because I thought, you know, I could go and just over dye it a different color. I just, I really wanted a cream colored vest. So <laughs> I'm hoping that this one will work. So let me know what you think. If you think I need to dye it or if you think I can get away with it. Um, it's kind of a bummer, but anyway, love this. Okay, I'm going to put this back on Lena so I don't have a naked mannequin behind me. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that is what I finished. Um, what I'm currently working on is another, um, sorry, I'm pulling it out of the knitting bag here, another no frills sweater from petite knits i made this for myself this i'm actually doing for my daughter and i'm doing it in the same combination this is what we've got so far um this is also a strand of merino wool with a strand of silk mohair these are both ridiculous yarns um and i will leave those linked down below um the color oh well i can't the merino wool on this is called like dawn on the pier and it's no longer available but the mohair i mean she's got a whole bunch of other it's of you know stuff that she's dyed but the um silk mohair is still available it's the lavender colorway and i just love this sweater so obviously i'll go back and knit the sleeves once we get done to the body i think i have like four more inches left and then i hit the ribbing for the body um for her but that's knitting up really quickly which is exciting and i'm about ready to need to change yarn I would pull that out, but I don't want to tangle anything because <laughs> I'm at the very end of the cake and that can get tangled so easily. So that's what I'm currently working on for her. Feels lovely. She's loving it. Very excited about that. All right. So those are projects that I have finished and one I've got in the hopper right now. Now I wanted to share some future projects and also show um, my haul from a fiber fest that I went to at... Mm, I think it was before Thanksgiving, so middle of November, I guess, um, that I went to. So let's talk, let's talk future projects real quick, and then I'll show you my haul from the Fiber Fest. Okay, so um, I've shown this if you've watched uh, vlog, let's see, Vlogmas or even maybe one of the other videos, but I am, oh no, this was my um, winter plans, so for my winter capsule. So I am using Miss Babs yarn. Again, this is the um, merino wool fingering weight and I'm knitting it with a uh, silk mohair blend. So I will use a strand of this and a strand of this to make up the sweater. And I th think I'm gonna do the balloon sweater by Petite Knits. That's kind of what I'm, I'm leaning towards right now. Um, that could change, but I think that's what I'm gonna do. So these are both from Miss Babs. I love that color combination. I'm needing like a warm pink for my um, capsule. And I think this is gonna tick all the boxes. Very excited about that. And this is like right, the warm pink that's like right on my color card. So that's exciting. So that, does anyone else use leftover like sheet um, bags? <laughs> like that zip, like the plastic bags with zippers. So handy. So there's my next project all in the little bag. So handy. Um, and then after that, I showed this to you guys on my Destashify um, video. But this is the Blacklight Elvis Cross Creek sock yarn that I, I don't have any mohair to go with this yet, but I showed this one on the Desashify um, video and I'll, I'll link that up below above. But yeah, I've got some options for this as well. So that is one that I purchased and still waiting. I just need to get some mo silk mohair to go with that, but I'll probably wait until I at least get, cause that's my next sweater, the one that I just showed you. And then this one will be after that. Okay. Let's talk the fiber fest. I, went a little nuts. It was my first fiber fest that I've ever been to. I went with my group of knitting friends, which was so much fun. But before I show you that, I want to talk about, I got a um, spinning wheel. So my friend Jenny and I took a spinning class back in end of August, September, August. It was August. It was August because the kids had just started back to school and down in Nashville, Indiana, and that is in Brown County. And we took, they had a little like fiber arts, um, retreat kind of thing with classes and all that kind of stuff down there. And we took a spinning class. It was like a, a 
Friday, Saturday, I guess, class. Loved it. I talked about it on the channel. Went looking for wheels because wheels are very expensive. And a dear viewer reached out to me who had owned a knitting shop and sold spinning wheels many years ago and had a one of her friends who was a past client that had purchased the wheel from her was ready to get rid of her wheel. So it's about a 20-year-old Kiwi Ashford or Ashford Kiwi wheel um, that she wanted to get rid of. Gave me a fantastic price on it, which was just lovely. They were in Wisconsin. She sent everything to me and I have been playing with it. And I will, I'll show you footage of what the wheel looks like so you can see. The yarn that is on it is actually yarn. I, it's my leading yarn, so I did not spin that. <laughs> it's leading yarn that I have on there. Um, it's all ready for me to spin some of the new roving that I got. But I love this thing. It is in great shape. Um, I have been learning how to use it, learning how to adjust tensions, all that kind of thing, and just really having a lot of fun. I find it very zen, very like therapeutic to spin. So um, yes, very exciting. And with that came all of the roving that she had stored up. Now all, pretty much all of it is um, natural colored sheep wool. So um, nothing has been dyed. You know, it's, I've got some like different grays, different shades of browns, um, some lighter cream colors, but it's all like ready, to, you know, natural right off the sheep. So what I thought would be fun is for me, um, so the way if you're not uh, familiar with spinning, the way it works is that you spin off of the roving and you make your, um, I'm going to be awful with term terminology, like your thread. <laughs> I don't know, like one single ply, I guess. And then you go back and you ply that, two single plies ply together, and then you've got yarn that you can actually knit with. So I thought it might be kind of fun for me to do some where I, um, do like the stuff that's dyed. And this is actually some uh, roving I got at my retreat. Look, I'm getting better. <laughs> this looks so much better than the, I mean, I haven't, it's still single ply, so I haven't plied it with another one yet. But um, yes, I'm very proud of myself with how much better I'm getting. So that is what I did with, um, here recently. But I'm gonna ply this with um, just some of the plain wool that is just the natural colors and then I think that that'll be kind of cool mixing the natural with some of the more colorful stuff. So that is my plan. So that is what I have most recently spun. So I've got my sewing wheel set up and I'm going to spin some of the natural stuff next. But then after that, now we're going to dig into what I grabbed at the Fiber Fest. I grabbed um, two different ugh, types of roving from two different um, vendors. And I think, hmm, I don't know if I've got, I'm sure I've got the card somewhere. Again, I'll leave links down to where I can find them. But I saw this roving and just, look at those colors, fell in love with it. Now these are, this pink is way too cool for me, but I thought it would just be fun to play around with. And I'm still learning. Um, it was like 30 bucks for one, um, Hank, I guess you would call this. This was like balled up much nicer, but she undid it for me because she was showing me how she would roll it up and spin it so that you were getting like all of the colors kind of, you weren't, you know, just stuck with like a long blue one and then a long pink one that where it kind of changed colors a little quicker. So she was, I told her I was a newbie and she was showing me how um, to wrap it on your hand and then pull from there. So anyway, so she took that apart, but I got two of these and this really fun color. Isn't that lovely? And there's like some orange kind of in there. I just find it's fun when you can watch the changing colors, just like watching changing colors with um, when you're knitting. And then I grabbed this beautiful colorway. This is from Nomad Yarns. Isn't that beautiful, those greens? And they are in um, Plainfield, Indiana, and they used to have, I was talking to the husband, and they used to have a shop, but now they just have this trailer, hence Nomad Yarns, and they travel around just to different places, and they have the whole shop set up in this trailer, so they just have to, like, drop the back of the trailer, and it's, um, they, you know, they sell some Malabrigo and some other stuff in their little um, trailer shop, but they also do a lot of hand dyeing themselves. So this is one that they hand dyed themselves, and that's what I was interested in, grabbing stuff that um, was local, locally dyed. So I grabbed some of this roving as well from them. Um, yeah, and I'm excited to get going on that. I think that's going to be really pretty with the natural stuff that I've got. So those are the two rovings that I grabbed. Everything else in here are yarns. 
Okay, and we actually hit two stops. We went to um, this Fiber Fest, and then we went to a local, to us, um, craft fair that's in one of our high schools, and um, I bought two yarns there as well. Because there were people selling hand-dyed yarn there. Okay, so this is also from uh, the Nomad Yarn. So this is yarn that they've dyed, which I think is beautiful. And this is a cooler, like, gray. But I'm going to knit, um, it's called Pewter Cup, but I am going to knit my daughter um, a sweater vest. She would like a sweater vest from Lily Kate Makes. I can't remember the name of it. I'll pop it here <laughs> so you can see what it is. Um, but she loves that and loves the idea of wearing that over like a real big statement sleeve. You know, I'm, I'm going to be making her a blouse with statement sleeves, a white one collared. Um, and she likes the idea of putting that on over a, um, or underneath a sweater vest. So I'm going to knit that sweater vest. I think it'll be very uh, flattering on her. So I bought that yarn for this yarn for that pattern. And then I grabbed this. Um, there were a couple of gals there. This is hand dyed stuff. See, Maria and May dye works. And this is, um, this is called Charizard, which I think is, it's a Pokemon for those of you that aren't, uh, familiar. I even have little yarn charms, like little stitch markers on there. But I love the colors, the oranges that go into a little bit of the teal and some of the warmer yellows. I think that's going to be so good. And I think that this might be fun to knit with, um, a cream, um, mohair silk combo because this would be um you would lighten it up a little bit and i think make it great for springtime so hopefully i can get through all this other knitting and by spring i can be knitting with this but i've got three skeins of this i will need to get some silk um mohair blend but yes these three ladies they were so friendly and i i bought that from them and i'm not sure what i'm gonna make with that okay i think that's just which pattern yet it might even be a cardigan. I don't know. All right. And then we went, so that's all, everything I got at the Fiber Fest. And then we went over to the um, school and I bought, there was a gal there that hand dyes and hand spins her yarn. And this is beautiful stuff. So this is called Wild Garden and um, the gal had spun this herself and it is beautiful. It's got like the little, um, see the little bits that are in there? She just did a beautiful job. And she said she learned at the uh, local art school on, um, just took a couple classes on spinning. And I bought, I think I bought three of these. I did. Three of these. So, um, I just think the colors, the colors are a little cool for me, but it might be something fun for my daughter if I tone them down because she does better with muted. Uh, maybe even like a light gray might tone those down really nicely for her. So yeah, we'll play around with that and come up with something fun. But um, yeah, I thought that that was a fun little color combo. And I just really wanted to support a local artisan. I, I just find that very important. And then, dump those back in there. I bought this. So this was a different gal and this is a merino and it is, oh, I think it's worsted. Yes, a worsted merino. And I just bought one skein of it. What is this called? It's something summer garden. I just think that's beautiful. Um, I just love the colors and this is just for a hat. Uh, I thought this would make a wonderful hat for myself or for my daughter. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Cause I see muted cool colors as well as some of my colors, like the warmer colors in there. So we'll see where it kind of reads once it's knitted up on who gets it. We have about the same size head. So I, I bought that. So that was also hand dyed locally. And I just thought that was so cool. Those colors are just beautiful. One of my friends grabbed um, a different, same color uh, dye set or whatever, but it was a different um, substrate. Chunkier maybe, I think she went with the bulky, also to do a hat, but something a little bit different. So anyway. Okay guys, I think that's it. I think that is all of my <laughs> knitting plans. I wanted to show you my haul, my spinning wheel. Um, so I've been doing that now. Someone had asked, actually a friend of mine had asked in the comments, like how I find time to do all of these various hobbies. To be honest, I have a hard time relaxing and knitting and the spinning are what I do when I'm winding down at night in front of the television. I can't just sit and watch television, which is not healthy, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, we all try and you know, do what we can, but I do find it I, that I can relax if my hands are doing something, which sounds a little crazy, but yeah, that's, that is how I squeeze in 
my fiber arts hobbies. <laughs> Sitting down watching television with my family and yeah, knitting and or spinning. So there you have it. That's a lot of stuff. But um, yeah, my needles have been busy. I cast on my daughter's sweater that you just saw. I cast that on on December 8th. So I've gotten pretty far in just a short amount of time. I'm feeling really good about that. I think that's going to be finished by the time um, we get to the end. I think I'll have that done by the end of the year. So um, yeah, because I've got a lot of knitting time in my future. I mean, obviously you're watching this at the end of the year, but I'm filming this much earlier than that. So I guess I'm filming this on the 23rd. So from the 8th to the 23rd, I've gotten that far on the sweater. I think I can finish it by the end of the year when you're actually washing this. So <laughs> there you have it. All right, guys, once again, happy, happy new year. Um, next week, I have a pattern release for you on Tuesday. And then on Friday, I'm going to show you everything that I made for my son that all got made up before Christmas. Um, but yes, I've got that little lookbook. I've got three things that I made for him that I'll be showing you on Friday next week. All right, um, let's see. The last Vlogmas is going to be up on Sunday, and then we're going to go back to um, tutorials and sew-alongs and stuff on Sundays. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, a wonderful New Year's, and I will see you next year. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>